greenteaguru.co.uk offers green tea, white tea, black tea, oolong tea, and we absolutely love pu'er tea with offerings of Misty Peaks, Yunnan Sourcing, Mung Hai, and Sha Guan. We regularly visit Hong Kong and Guangdong, sourcing out very interesting and special cakes for your tea table. Green Tea Guru, based in UK with worldwide delivery. Good to see you here, Hallam. What have you been drinking recently? What sort of tea have you been drinking? <clears throat> Shang. Oh yeah, I love the Shang. I mean, yeah, we could talk all day about Sheng. It's, it's just magic, isn't it, really? I'm looking at most likely buying in a load of um, um, Taiwanese oolong uh, for summer. Uh, well, it's summer now, but the summer harvest comes in and uh, probably landing in a couple of weeks, I think, maybe a bit longer. Um, but there's a wicked company um, out in Taiwan. Shaguan Tuos, quite a bit been getting through it. Oh yeah, Shaguan Tuos, okay. Which one's your favourite? My one's definitely the FT Taiwan number six. 2012, that's the one I like. 2012 Shaguan uh, Tuo. Some people to go that's a weird one. Uh, some people go brilliant. Yeah, it is. It's super thick. It's just a great tea. And um, I bought a case of that tea, and it's just flying out. I I plan to have that case. Um, yeah, um, golden yellow colour, definitely very thick. Hallam says. Um, I bought that case. I plan to have it for a while, but I don't think for the way it's going, I'm going to have it in, in about a year's time. It's just going out the door. Um, it's one of these, how much do you get in a case? Um, it, you know what, it depends um, on the supplier. I think, um, I think 250, it could be more, 250, so 25 kilos, something like that. But I've been saying, um, when people ask me what sort of tea is, um, is a good one to earmark for the future. Boxes are cool though. Yeah, the the, the hex it's a hex. Yeah, I think it is. No, octagonal. I guess I'll go and get one. <laughs> All right, people. If you don't know what we're talking about here, me and Hallam are talking about the FT Taiwan. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hexagonal box. So this is 2012. It's a uh, raw sheng, raw pua. It's really interesting. Um, I don't know what they did to this. It'd be a shame if they um, added anything to it. I have no idea, but it just tastes really good and syrupy. It might just be blended with some. Some older leaf, maybe I don't know, but it really does taste different to to much other to a lot of other things I've tasted. But as I say to a lot of people, okay. <laughs> um, but as I say to a lot of people, um, you know, if they when they ask me what sort of tea is going to last its time and which one's going to be great in ten years, well, no one really knows. You got some good ideas. Um, this one is going to be really interesting, I think. I mean, it's syrupy. Um, and sweet um, and uh, full on flavour now um, that's only going to develop as time goes by and it's a wicked one to get uh, of course it's 
you know, it, in a way, this is, the originals are worth a lot too. My God, yeah, the originals. Um, they're going for crazy money. The originals of the FT Taiwan, I believe. Um, but um, the, in, this is similar in nature, flavour-wise. I won't say flavour-wise, but the syrupy sweetness <clears throat> is very similar to a Mengai 7542. But I personally didn't get that syrupy sweetness until it was a bit older down the track. Because um, I tried a 7542 in 2011 um, and I got that in 2014. So it was like two or three years old. Smoky and strong. Fine, great, yeah, okay. But very basic. Nothing really, I, I didn't like it that much. Well, I liked it, it was alright. But nothing to write home about. But now... Five years later, well, five years, five years after its production, this 2011, it's just getting sweet and syrupy, and that's what this tastes like now. Um, and this, you know, this is 2012, but that's that's what this tasted like last year. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and we all know about the 7542. The main guy 7542 is the most sought after um, raw pure for investors. Um, I've got the 2011, I've got a 2005, which has jumped off the shelf. I haven't got a lot of that left at all, and I'm not going to get any more, I don't think. It's like a pine wood piece of wood, old bunk bed, infused with sugar water, with stale hay. Helen, I think you've, I think you've knocked that on the head. I think you've nailed it. That's exactly, yeah, it is. <laughs> and it tastes great. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. So Helen, I'm um, drinking this. You might see me talking about this uh, white pu uh, white tea cake um, in one of my previous videos. I, I did a little nudge towards it, and that's what I'm brewing up now. Um, before I did this periscope, I was thinking, oh, shall I finish the video that I'm going to do on this now today, or shall I do a periscope on it while I'm drinking it? I thought oh, I'll just do a periscope and I'll do the video later or tomorrow. <laughs> But no, it's, it's good. Um, I'm going to get more of it. I'm going to get probably, I don't know, a little bit more than I did this time. Uh, and I'm going to try and keep one away. Um, with a bit of humidity, maybe 60%. And just uh, leave it to do it in a small box so it's on its own. Just white tea. Um, and just leave it. Because... Um, White, aged white tea is um, supposed to be very good. I've never tried it. This one's two years old. It's still, it tastes great. Um, as I was saying earlier in the um, in the video, Alan, uh, I think it's Holji Cha. I think. I can't remember. I was reading a forum. Uh, no, so I did this earlier. I was reading a blog post about uh, this guy who uh, was very dubious. Um, they're very skeptical of aged white tea, but he went and tried some and it was really good. Um, but it's not much we know about in the West, aged white tea. I need to get some, to be honest, because I don't know any other vendors that sell aged white tea. I don't know if you've come across it, Helen. Uh, what am I up to? Um, Green Tea Guru has some more shipments coming in of raw pu'er and a bit of ripe as well in a couple of weeks and then a couple of weeks after that I should be getting more a load more stuff coming in. So over the course of the next six weeks to two months, no, um, take a look at our website and you'll see the new stuff coming up. Um, and I've also got another so I've got three loads coming in. The last load, um, I'm going to be selling some very well-priced um, Benjing Raw. Um, I'll show you.
So this is the uh, wedding cake that I've been talking about before. Sorry, Hallam says, I have a strange white cake, 100 grams, no, no idea on the source, but it says 2013, Moonlight, lol, very good though. Cool. <clears throat> you know, white tea doesn't really go down in flavour. It changes. Um, like Silver Needle, for example. Um, over the course of two years, Silver Needle, on the first year, it'll be very light, very, um, not floral, but I get cucumber sort of flavour on, um, on uh, Silver Needle, and it's superb. The second year, all that sort of dies back, and it goes more sort of hay and delicate notes like that. Um, some people prefer the first year, some people prefer the second year. Um, I've still got some of that Silver Needle um, from 2014. Still tastes great, um, but yeah, it definitely changes over time. I don't think white tea um, goes bad. No, it doesn't go bad. It doesn't get any worse. <laughs> Not that it's bad to start with. <laughs> Hello, Periscopa. So we're brewing up some white tea. So, just going to show you what we're up. To. Oh, let's have another. It doesn't want to focus, does it? Really doesn't want to focus. I'm having some real dramas with this iPad. I don't know why. You normally, you normally quite good to me, iPad. Today you're not being. You're being a bit of a donkey. Yeah, so what was I saying? Build time machine, step two, profit and very tea drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. Let's do that. Let's build a tea time machine. I mean, wouldn't that be so cool? I mean, oh, you can... T I just haven't got the patience. I really haven't got the patience. There are some teas hanging around. There are some teas hanging around right now. I just really want to try in 10 years time. Oh, um, God, what is it? What about thinking? With thinking and not looking. Um, Yunnan sourcing, um, Meishan, Qing Meishan, Meishan, yeah. Uh, oh, it was an old Arbor 2014, that's a wicked tea. Tastes or smells like green apples, some people say. I want to know what that tastes like in 10 years' time. Also, uh, Yunnan sauce in... Oh my god, what's it called? It's a Fen... It's a Fenqing... It's, um, it's from Fenqing area. But this tea is incredible. I sell 100 grams for 30 quid. Um, so it's pricey. But it's ancient arbor. And my god, is it incredible. Um, Misty Peak's good. Um, this one's bloody good. Um, it's just, it's got a, um, it's got a texture like tonic water, tingly and bubbly. Even though it hasn't got any bubbles in it, it's just a really, really good tea. I really want to taste that in ten years' time. <coughs> what about yourself, Alan? Anything you want to try in ten years' time? Oh. The PG Tips 1999 Sunflower Cake. Yeah, I've heard that's a good one. I really have. <laughs> Love you, PG Tips. Uh, but no, this is, um, I go on about this a lot. This is, um, it's nothing spectacular. Um, Fenching, um, Diane Hong Group, um, F7813. This is the 2007 cake. That's the wedding cake, you know the one. I got in trouble with Mrs. Guru for flogging too much of this, uh, so I'm not allowed to sell anymore. Um, <clears throat> but I have managed to source um, the 2006 version of the very same cake, so I'm getting a load of that coming over. <clears throat> Bloody whole case of it. Um, and I'll be selling that at a very reasonable price. <clears throat> so 10 years old, um, and I'll tell you what. Um, 
uh, Lin Can, uh, where this tea comes from, where Fenching comes from. Um, there's a lot of tea coming out of that county. Um, but, you know, they might be doing cakes, you know, that, like, like this that aren't special, but they've got, they've got some character behind them. They're ripes and they're raw. They've got some really good characters behind them. I love the area. For a, for a uh, budget cake, for a budget sort of leaf, and most of them are, um, you get some great flavour out, out of that area, Lin Kang. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Yeah, the news roundup for Green Tea Guru. That's it, really. I'm um, working on some more videos. I've still got some more videos to come out, and I'm sorry I haven't done any for ages. Um, more tea coming very shortly. Loads of raw. Um, yeah. Um, I do. I, I used to watch them a lot, TDB. Um, if they are one thing, they are knowledgeable. Um, cool people. Um, James and Denny. They have one of your teas. They did. Yes, they did. Um, how long ago was, was that the one like a year or two ago? Um, where they've got all this paint on their face and they're, uh, it's a girl with Denny. Can't remember. Yeah, this is old school. Um, this is a, at least a year and a half ago or more. Um, and that was this one here. Uh, I kindly sent him some of this. Um, no, no, I didn't. I didn't send them that. No, I, no, I did send them that, and they didn't do a video review on it. It was. That's the one I was going to say. Sorry, it was um, Ui uh, Rock Oolong. Uh, it was Yancha. I can't remember what. It was a rock tea of some description, which I've still got, and it's a bloody good tea. That's the one. Well remembered, Hallam. They're cool dudes, those two. Um, I think they, I think they got it right because they're really informative. Um, they've got a touch of uh, well, they're likable chaps, aren't they? They've they got they've got character, and uh, they throw in a little bit of funniness, and they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, I haven't kept up with them the last couple of months, though. I need to watch more. Um, but, maybe I should drink more roasted oolongs too. Um, you know what? You just drink what you want to drink. Um, but, roasted oolongs, um, wicked. It's just amazing flavours. I remember when I first started getting into good tea, it was the roasted oolongs that I was um, most impressed with. Um, for a person that had never drank um, good tea before, um, it's the roasted oolongs that made me go, "Whoa, this is this is big." <laughs> um, yeah, and um, the one that's impressed me the most, and it's the one I didn't buy any. I'm kicking myself why I did not buy any of it. <coughs> um, Gong, they call it Gong Fu Oolong from the Gong Fu Tea House. Just. Absolutely astounding. I'm going to change the track. Um, yeah, Gong Fu Oolong. Do you, um, Hallam says, do you see many aged oolongs in China? Not really. But then I've been going out there going, Pua Cha, Pua Cha, Pua Cha, Pua Cha. <laughs> Basically, every tea dealer. I am talking to, um, I'm asking for raw pua or ripe pua. I stop at some which do dan chong uh, and they specialise only in dan chong and I might, you know. But um, I haven't come across any um, aged oolongs yet, but I haven't gone looking for them, you see. It, I'll tell you, look, the problem is. If I go to Guangdong um, and I spend a whole day going out and, and looking uh, to buy tea, I'd be lucky, really, if I sit down and drink tea to more than more than eight tea shops. They'll just roll out tea after tea after tea after tea after tea, leave, find another one you like, tea after tea after tea. <laughs> it's nuts. 
Um, so I've, I've, I've really gone on there with my poor head, to be honest. I'm sure there's loads out there. I just need to find it and look hard for it. Um, I do s serve up uh, an aged oolong. Um, nothing spectacular, but it's very, it's it's good. It's a, it's a good aged oolong. Uh, it's got some sort of berry notes to it, <clears throat> but I've only tried I've only tried out of all age oolongs. It's the only one I've tried. Um, yeah, uh, but this um, Gong Fu oolong <coughs> that I tried the Gong Fu Chew, um, Tea House. You know you, you've seen the video. I'm sure you have. Um, just absolutely incredible. The flavour just knocks you back. It tastes like coffee, zero bitterness. Um, but it costs a lot of money because you've got to get yourself your um, um, clay teapot, stuff a load in, 10 grams or more. Basically, this, the, the, the oolong needs to be you know, half coming out of the whole of the <laughs> it's gotta be nearly exploding out of the um out of the teapot. <clears throat> um and uh, you've got to use a lot of it. It's it's not cheap, but my god, when you when you brew it up in that fashion, um it's just something to behold. I need to get some. But no, I mean um oolongs it's just you know just like Puer, the Oolong world is is um, <clears throat> the Oolong world is is pretty cool. Um, you've got as you as you know you know you've got that wide spectrum of flavours going from super fresh down to um, you know roasted and anywhere in between. Um, you've got the different varietals, different areas, and um, the different processing and. Um, you know, with the oolongs, what makes or breaks it is a uh, is the processing, and a lot of guys, unfortunately, have stepped away from from um, the roasted um, oolongs um, because they want to mass produce the stuff, just kick it out the door and um, and sell it, um, so they avoid all that uh, all that all that uh, craftsmanship of roasting uh, and favour the more lightly processed oolongs and just sell sell sell. Um, I mean, you know, you can get some really expensive oolongs and, you know, they're worth their money because they taste so good. I don't think there are many good Western vendors for it, maybe. There, there are, there are some, um, there are some. <coughs> I had, uh, I had a really good concubine, um, Oolong, which is the um, it's, it's Taiwanese bug bitten. So the little bugs have been allowed on the leaf and they bite it, and it was it had a honey flavour. It was, I'd say right now, it's probably my top top three all time teas. I know it's talking talking oolong, talking tea. That concubine oolong was was just incredible, but at I don't know, thirty-two pounds for a hundred grams didn't sell very well. Um, you know, it's a massive outlay, but the flavour was just phenomenal. Phenomenal. You need to um, test the water with some vendors. Um, go and find, go look at some reviews. Um, I'm reluctant to to buy in many of these oolongs because I need a bigger customer base before I can do that. Um, you know, because if I'm laying out loads and loads of money on kilos of this tea and people don't buy it, I'm kind of stuck with it. And it's not like Pu'er. Well, it, well, you can you can store oolong, but um, it's a lot harder to to deal with the fresh stuff. Uh, the roasted stuff is you know you can keep it a lot longer, but if it's if it's not roasted, then um, it doesn't last very long before the flavour goes down quite a peg. So that's my problem with it. Saying that, I'm going to buy in a load anyway this um, this summer, most likely, and um, try and I might do a deal. I might do a deal just so I get a load out the door, so people can experience what 
really good oolong can taste like when it's fresh. And I'm talking really here about the ones that aren't processed too much, the light, the lightly processed ones. Because um, when they're fresh, and within the first three months, they, you know, they're not that expensive. You know, you get a good, um, um, oh, what ones am I thinking? Because I'm so tired, I can't see. There are some good high mountain ones, but it doesn't even have to be a high mountain. High mountain ones are good. They've got different, they've got, they're complex, complex flavours. Um, but um, milk oolong, you know, just, you know, for, I don't know how much it is, not a, not a lot. Um, but the flavour is so good, for milk oolong. And if you get it when it's, when it's you know, fresh, it's just superb. <coughs> um, I've got some dong ding, which is good. Um, and dog has got a um, very specific flavour. You know, some people might market their teas as being dong ding, and it's not. Um, but you can kind of tell by tasting it. Um, but the dong ding I used to have, I've run out of it now, was really good. That was heavily roasted, uh, heavily roasted dong ding, and the honey notes with the heavy roast just went together so well. It's incredible. Dong ding. Um, with about 30% pr um, um, processing, which I think is the normal way of doing it, is okay. No, it's good. It's very good. But this particular dong ding that with the heavy roast, um, bloody good. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hallam says, I love the smell of fresh oolong. Yeah. I need to get back into a lot of oolongs, I've just, it tastes like clouds. You know what, I kind of get what you mean. <laughs> Callum, uh, Hallam says, the smell of oolong tastes like clouds. Or maybe saying that oolong tastes like clouds, fresh oolong. There's something there, it's, what is it, the mineral sort of flavours? Because some of these ones can, you might think it tastes of not a lot, but there's a lot of mineral stuff going on there. I was big into oolongs a couple of years ago, and I've just gone crazy into into ripe and raw, mainly raw. And I swap back into ripe again, then back into raw. But I've just um, I haven't given oolongs a wide berth. I've just really been concentrating so hard on um, on my raw and ripes, which is really where my love is. Most of it, the tea. Um, but no, I I need to try and smash it a bit more with the oolongs get a, a few more in, because the ones I'm getting in, I've, I've got, a lot of them are going out. Um, I'm not really being left with any. Um, it's the more expensive ones that hang around more, and that's, that's, um, that's, you know, that's obvious. The Jade Oolong tastes like fresh steam from high mountain clouds. Clean water, mineral taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was from Hallam. Um, Jade's okay. I really prefer the milk oolong. I think, you know, um, I, I tasted quite an expensive um, milk oolong. No, it wasn't Taiwanese, it was, it was Chinese. And my God, the, the flavour just of, of um, milky honey flavour, just <clears throat> explosive. I mean, this stuff was, was pretty pricey. Um, I don't think it was high mountain either. I don't know what they've done. But, I mean, with, um, they say that low mountain oolongs are always good, but they don't have, they lack the complexity of high mountain. So, you know, if you don't mind having no complexity and having one baseline flavour, um, it's a great tea. If you're looking for, you know, a few more than one baseline flavour, so sweet with floral with whatever. Sorry, Hallam says, love milk oolong too, but I've never bought good stuff. So, I mean, tell me about that experience, Hallam. I mean, like, have you just been buying tea that might have been a bit old or lacking flavour or was it cheap? Or I mean, because, you know, um, milk oolong doesn't have to be expensive to be good. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Yep, 
you know, I think I could get a, I think I could get a pretty good Jade. Um, I, Jade is all right. I, it was all right. I, I'm, it's not my favourite, and it definitely wasn't a favourite of my customers. Milk flew out the table. Milk Oolong flew out um, a lot quicker than the Jade did. I could get it again, but I'm not a particularly big fan of it. But I might be completely wrong. Just because I'm not a fan of it doesn't mean that other people won't be either. So, I don't know whether to get it in or not. <clears throat> I could probably, uh, Hallam says, cheap, a bit stale all over. Good, but second time was a lot worse. It smelled like spoiled milk. Yeah, um, probably um, what's happened there is it's probably quite old. Um, and um, has it been stored well, I, I suggest? <clears throat> spoiled milk. So, you know, when the thing is with oolong, after it's stored for a while, um, it can go um, quite. Um, I had the word in my brain a minute ago. I do apologise. Quite, I'm quite tired. What's the word? Um, sport milk. Um, off, off tasting. I had the word in my brain. It's gone, but I think you know what I mean. Sour. You know the the sourness can come through, and um, I think it's down to where it's kept. And how it's kept because in the UK um, I've had some oolong hanging around and I haven't noticed any sour notes at all none um, but um, you know they do say because there's there's not a lot of humidity over here well the humidity is here just the heat is not here so the relative humidity is quite low I've got to put all my poo in uh, storage boxes with uh, added um, hum hum humid humidification facilities um, but uh, but yeah, you, I, I guess you you had a sp not a sport batch. It's just old. It's been hanging around. And it's gone sour. So I mean, you know, actually, places like UK are supposed to be really good places to age oolongs. Um, so I have thought about that. Have you been drinking much ripe recently? Lately, you know what? I've been mixing up my teas. Um, I've been drinking a little bit more raw than I normally do recently. Ripe, I've had a bit of. Um, I've been... What, what have I been... Go okay, the last week, ripe-wise, I've had <coughs> the Yin Hao 2007 Guangdong cake that I brought back. Yeah. Hallam, have you bought my... Did you buy that off me, did you? The Yin Hao 2007? Yeah, that's a, that's a wicked cake. It's cheap. <laughs> yeah. Hallam says, um, oh, types before you said, yeah, man. Great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, Yin Hao 2007. Um, before I come off top... Oh, right, I'll quickly say, uh, the Yin Hao 2007... Um, in the last week, and I've had the 2014 um, not silver needle white lotus, golden needle white lotus uh, from Mengai Tea Factory. It's like they have, you know, their flagship ripe, um, which is good. But on the on the Guangdong um, Yin Hao 2007, I'll tell you what I've noticed. I've been storing it. Um, when I t when I tried it out there, super smooth and um, just a banging cake, banging, banging, banging. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna buy a load more ripe who were from Gwen, uh, Guangdong because they have seriously got it going on down there with their ripes. It just tastes so good, and it tasted good for a month and a little bit longer after I had it here, but I didn't store it as high as I should have done. I'm, I'm storing it at like fifty. 50 um, RH humidity um, and that um, super duper smoothness yeah accelerated aging and with ripe there's no problem with that absolutely no problem if it's ripe just age that age it as quick as you can well you know quick as you can without spoiling it I suggest um, unless it's maybe um, <coughs> old arbor ripe I'd think twice about it 
maybe not. Oh, it's hard, isn't it? I mean, you know, you want to maintain with with old Arbor Ripe. You want to maintain the um, uh, the character, but then wouldn't it be good to see what it's like with a bit of mega aging? Oh, don't know. I might because I've got some. I've got some family over in Hong Kong that are really good at storing tea. Um, I might microwave. What is this, the microwave, Hallam? <laughs> Can you actually, can you, Hallam, are you saying you can actually microwave tea and, and instant age it? <laughs> i never heard of this, man. So with the 2000s, what I'm saying is when I bought this great ripe brewer back from um, Grandong, it tasted great, but then I stored it at a low, lower humidity. Um, and the super smoothness, it's still smooth, but the super smoothness just went. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a box just for Guangdong Ripe. And I'm going to whack up the um, humidity to about, uh, I, I don't really go, want to go past 70, really. Because it's, then it's potential troublesome territory. But I'm going to get it at 70 so that when my clients buy that tea off me, they can experience what I experienced um, in Guangdong in a few months after. I'm going to get it back to that level, so it's like super smooth. Um, you know, how you keep it when you guys get it, well, that's up to you, but buy that tea, drink it quick, and you'll get that experience, what I'm talking about, which is astounding. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I really like, <coughs> you can, like, you see, Hallam says, you see naked rapper, less cakes. I don't know, I, I'm not too sure what you mean, sorry. Naked rap, oh, do you mean naked rapper, like cakes with no wrappers at all? No. They exist, like um, white two T's, white whale. Autocorrect, yeah, autocorrect steps in, messes up, messes up the whole party, doesn't it? I mean, this is a cool thing. White two T's, bl um, blue whale, I think it was, white whale. White two T's, white, white whale, I think it was. Yeah, he, he's, um, <clears throat> he's done his thing and he's gone down to see the tea, the tea market, whatever, come across this massive load of, um, 10-year-old bricks or 12-year-old bricks, little little tea bricks, I think 100 grams a pop or whatever. No name, no wrapper, don't know what the hell they are. Gives it a taste. Tastes good. Wax on his own wrapper and says, Hey guys, stumbled across a load of this tea. It's cheap as, cheap as door nails. Um, Hallam says, the wrapper for White Tea's 2016 Pueros are very interesting. Yes, they are. Um, and they're getting a lot of exposure. Um, why not? He's a good vendor. He's a cool guy. Um, not that I've ever had the pleasure of speaking to him, but um, to be honest, um, <clears throat> when you've got a following like he has, you're doing something right. And you will do anything to... Um, what's the word? You will not do anything to ever um, jeopardise that customer base, especially in the in the West, because we've got all these forums. Um, it just takes one thing. It just takes, hey, cowfish, how you doing? Uh, we're brewing up some white tea. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. Keep them coming. <laughs> <clears throat> for my YouTube viewers, um, the hearts. Um, I, I get you get hearts on Periscope. Yeah, tea. That's right, cowfish. Yes. I'm gonna brew the kettle. I'll be very quick. Um, I can't remember who that was, was that, um, Hallam says you can't do hearts, I think you just like tap on the screen and hearts come up, all oh, very nice, <coughs> yeah, um, PG tipper, <laughs> no PG tips in the house, I'm afraid, <coughs> um, for your eyes, your kettle bore fast, well yeah, I've got a super duper kettle, this is a Bosch, um, and, um, I had a little bit in there and it was already quite warm, yeah, um, just for your eyes, Kelfish, I'm brewing up um, this, um, yeah, Bosch. Um, I'm brewing up this tea cake. This is uh, a white 
tea um, in cake form that I uh, personally um, got from Guangdong and I'll be doing a video on YouTube. I was, before I, I did this Periscope, I was wondering should I do the YouTube video or should I just brew some tea up on Periscope? I thought I'd brew some tea up. Yeah, China, I went to China to get it. Um, so yeah, this is the tea cake that I'm brewing up. Sweet and like sort of like berry, um, berry aroma. Okay, uh, Cal Calfish says, I really prefer Japan. <clears throat> Japanese tea or just Japan? I haven't done Japan, I'm planning on going maybe next year, if not the next, definitely. <laughs> Japan only. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. Always appreciated. I think the music stopped. <clears throat> um, but no, white two T. He's cool, um, and he's being he's being honest with his punters. He's saying, "Look, I found a load of this tea. I don't know what the hell it is. It tastes good. Um, I'll put my wrapper on it and go and try it." And everyone just went, yeah, this is great, and it's cheap, and buy, buy, buy. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do the same thing. I'd like to, um, if I, you know, in Guangdong, if I'm lucky enough to um, to come across a vendor that has any no-name cakes, and it tastes good, and it has to taste good and different and interesting, um, <laughs> T -O -U. Um, if it, you know, um, hey, cowfish, how you doing? <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Lee. Um, so, just to finish off what I was saying, um, if I come across any no-name cakes that taste good and taste interesting, hello, Mrs. Lee, um, I'd just love to buy a load of it, and no one else will, will have it. I won't even know what it is. No one will really know what it is. I'll wrap it in my wrapper and say, call it whatever, and um, that's what I'd like to do. Um, but I haven't got all the time in the world to spend... Um, you know, trolling around the tea market in China because I've only got a few days in a year to do that. Um, but that's what I'd love to do, find a good guy that I can just buy that stuff.